Hi, in this video we're going to take a look at how to change regular SQL statements into prepared statements. And so this will prevent us from experiencing SQL injection attacks. So I'm going to be using this page here, which is the PHP official documentation. I'm also going to be looking at the W3Schools website. And then finally we're going to take a look at a Stack Overflow comment. Let's take a look at the code where we're at right now. So in the previous videos, we created a service that was called a database service, and we were working on this function called find by last name. In this function, we did some connections, we did a SQL statement, and then we actually uh, ran through the results and created a list called persons array. So we're gonna modify this and make it into a prepared statement. So let's take a look at the official PHP page and let's see if they have some examples here we can follow. So there is an object-oriented style and a procedural style. We're interested in the object-oriented style. I'm going to go straight down to the examples. So let's take a look at what they're creating here. So nothing different here. We created a link to a object for a SQL uh, statement. We check to see if we're connected. Now this is different here. We're going to take a look at this line where it says we're going to create a statement that has a prepare element in it. And you notice it's got the uh, question mark here. And let's, uh, let's keep that in mind. We're gonna, we're gonna use this as an example. Also in the uh, W3Schools page, they have a, maybe a clearer example. It first of all tells us a little bit about what their sta statements are for. And then what we're interested in is their example code. So let's take a look at uh, a real clear reason of how this helps us prevent SQL injection attacks. So here's their example. We have a statement that uh, takes the connection and uses the uh, prepare method. So prepare method takes a SQL statement and you can see uses question marks as their placeholders. Then after the question marks have been assigned a placeholder, it runs a, a command called bind param or bind parameter and then the inputs are listed here as strings so triple s sss means that each of these represents a string so we might have an, a letter besides this as a in a different placeholder it might be an integer and then uh, that would probably be the letter i and then later it says let's take the uh, variables that are uh, that are associated and then actually give them a value. Finally run this statement called execute and then execute will uh, let us uh, run the qu query. It's missing one item here of how to get the information from the uh, from the code into, uh, into a prepared result. So th the last thing we're going to do is take a look at this line here for how do I make my uh, SQL statement using a like result and there is some pretty good example code here. So the two options here show us uh, code that's working, and we're going to use the second one as our model. So all those three resources I recommend you go take a look at and read the details. So let's switch back into our code here and make some modifications. So I'm going to delete the original SQL query line and create a new one. So let's see, after our connection is made, let's create a statement. It's called um, a dollar sign STMT is kind of standard and we are going to do a connection object with a method called uh, prepare prepare there it is and now it says give me your queries so so our results were select ID first name last name from customers where the first name is like and instead of putting in the uh, the parameter dollar sign n I'm using a question mark now I want to take the next statement and stmt and use the method called bind parameter. And let's see, bind parameter says, take me, uh, first of all, give me the types. Well, this uh, question mark is going to represent a string, so I'm going to put in a, a lowercase s. And now it says, what is the variable that you're trying to match? Well, we're using the uh, letter dollar sign n for our parameter being passed in and that's what you would think would need to be done. However, what I'd like to do is actually, instead of a question mark, I want to have something like this, where it's a, 
a wildcard character, question mark, wildcard. SQL does not, not allow us to type that in directly here. And we cannot also, we, it would be nice if we could just put it in right here. And you can test this out, but I can tell you it won't work. So instead of doing those kind of uh, attachments, I'm going to create a new variable, an intermediate variable, and I'm going to call it like underscore n. And I'm just simply going to append the uh, n to a, parent, uh, to a percent sign at the beginning and the end of it. And so then we can say like n is our associated uh, parameter. Okay, so now the next thing is to do is to execute this uh, statement here. So there is an execute uh, method execute comes up. So once the statement has been executed, then we should be able to get the results. So we type in result as a new variable, and that's going to equal the statement, and we are going to use the method called get result. Okay, so that right there should give us a result variable, and then we can get rid of this original one that was used for just running a straight query. So those are the changes that should make it work. So everything else works the same after we get this result variable. It should work all the way to the bottom of the page. So I'm going to save this. So I'm going to go back into my web browser and look for this current version I'm running on and type testing2. And sure enough, I'm getting the results here. Now why am I getting the results specifically here? It's because of my testing only and let's go check the uh, the test script here. So I have tried to do a find by name of the letter A. So I'm going to change this to use the previous example of using uh, print R instead of JSON data and I get the same results. Try and change something else. If we wanted to change the word to Mar and see if we get any results, we get one guy and his first name is Mark. So the results are the same at the end, but this model here of running prepared statements will get you a, a, a more secure connection and so you don't have to worry about SQL injection attacks. So just to see where you can get some sample code, go back to the Stack Overflow page here that I was looking at. Go take a look at the uh, W3Schools. This shows you how to do an insert example using prepared statements and also the official documentation. Now, they're using a, something a little bit different. It's called fetch instead of uh, using the uh, get results. And if you look down in the notes further here, you can see we are using the alternative that another user has suggested. So there's two ways that you could have written this. And uh, I'm just using this one as a preference. And you can choose either one. So in the question of whether you use bind results and fetch or get result, there's a nice post here on Stack Overflow as well. So this uh, answer gets a lot of upvotes. It says use bind results would be better if you are specifying all of your column names. If you're using get results, it's when you use the star character and then they has uh, some source code for each of these and then a conclusion here, uh, the, which one you can use with which type of selections. So keep that in mind when you're writing your queries.